All right. Merry Christmas to everybody, or post-Merry Christmas. Um, looking forward to playing the Chargers here, division game. Um, hopefully it helps that we've played them before, but we ain't taking that for granted. We're going to do our normal work week. And with that, I'll open it up. This is the team that you guys kind of got on that roll, started with down in Mexico City. <coughs> it would, yeah. Anything special about that game that kind of clicked for you guys, that they kind of continue going here? Uh, I just I remember it was a challenge at the end. Um, it was a tight game, a one possession game, and we had to. Dan had to make that ex, uh, interception at the end. I, look at I, I. Here's how I look at the Chargers. They uh, they got a head coach that keeps them battling in games. They got a quarterback that's you know been around a long time that does a lot of good things. They got a running back. They, you know we I would share this with you. Our, our pro personnel department when they give us the depth chart each week that I put up for the players. Um, they usually put in red the guys that they think are the stars. You know, the guys that we gotta. There was about six or seven reds with this team. Usually we have three. Um, that tells you all you need to know about them. But I, I don't remember anything unique other than the guys played real well, and hopefully we do the same thing. What's the thought process behind the way you guys utilized Kendall last game? And is that yeah, I mean, the one good thing about the guys that we have back there in the secondary that they can play dual positions. And uh, way back when we installed in the OTAs, I remember putting up uh, play sheets of, of certain coverages, not all of them, that when I, I told them that as I explain what each person does, everybody should listen because at some point, most of you will have to play a different spot. And I think when you can do that, it gives you flexibility and maybe it gives the quarterback something to think about. So with Kendall, that's the moving around. I, I think, yeah. think that's what you're <clears throat> asking about, right? Yeah, do you feel right. like in, in that role, almost as a safety, that kind of clicked a little bit more for him? Well, I'm, I mean, you'd have to ask him. Um, but I would think the more foundation or reps you get, the more comfortable. I, I Probably a pretty safe guess that the answer is yes, but I, I'd check with Kendall. Steve, where did you, where did you first learn or come upon this idea and the fact that it can work in the NFL if guys approach it the correct way to play multiple positions in the back end. Oh, I don't know. Uh, somewhere along the way, uh, not the, listen. You have to know your personnel. Um, right. In order to do it. Yeah, you got to have guys that are cerebral. You know, from the chin to the hairline, they they respect it, they work at it. Otherwise, you're probably hurting yourself if you move guys around. But we'd like to be able to do that. We don't always do it. Uh, we pick games uh, that we think it's uh, going to help us. Because uh, there is something, you know, when you get in the course of the week and you get, I don't know, X number of reps, mm -hmm. you got to decide uh, if this particular position needs these three routes, you got to keep them at that position. So it's a, it's always a balance in that. Yeah. You mentioned the players in the red. We're, we're, what about Austin Eckler? Oh, yeah, he was red. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bright red. Uh, he's, he's a problem. Uh, he's one of those guys that we uh, label as a game wrecker or can be a game wrecker that we can't let that happen. He does a lot of things really well. He's scary. He was scary the last time we played him. He's even he's scarier now. What, what sets him apart for like a lot of running backs yeah. to catch the ball out of the backfield? Yeah, I mean, I, him, he, he's, he's nifty. I mean, he just has wide receiver moves, and he gets it. And the one thing he does with the ball, like most of the running backs that can catch it, I mean, when he, when he catches it and turns himself into a running back, he's a problem with yards after catch. And it's the explosive plays that get you in trouble on defense. Um, They've got a number of players that can, uh, you know, that, that Philip Rivers has that can create an explosive play, uh, and he's one of them. Xavier know. Williams is back in the mix uh, now. Before he was hurt, he was playing about 40 to 50 percent of snaps. Yeah. Can he ease back in, or do you see? Uh, you know, we haven't. I'm not sure. You know, with the luxury right now is we got five guys in there that we can rotate around. We'll see when we get to game day what um, Coach Reeds decides to do. But it's nice to have him there. I mean, he's one of those players that. You know, can play a couple of positions as a D lineman because he's a smart football player, so it's good to have him back. Well, Coach, Damian Wilson only played six snaps yeah. against the Bears. Was this because of the game plan, or I mean, what led that? No, just more of what the Bears were doing. You know, we had certain packages for certain personnel that they put in there, um, and that's what led that. Yeah. Which is when they hired you, you know, one of the first things he mentioned is that you coach a complementary style for what he wants to do offensively. What does that mean to you? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the quote was complimentary style. Yeah. It's yeah. Hard. Well, we're not. Listen, we're we're not. We're multiple. I mean, that's probably what Coach was talking about. We're multiple. We don't sit in one front. We don't sit in one coverage. Um, in today's football, and I think Coach Reed would agree with this because it really, from his end, they do the same thing. 
Um, you got to make it confusing for the people that you're playing against because there's really smart coaches in this league and really smart football players, especially those quarterbacks like one we're getting ready to play. Uh, and the last time we played them, he found a lot of ways to put them in the right play based on what we were showing them. And that's kind of the game within the game. Um, hopefully we have enough things in this particular package where we challenge a quarterback uh, to know exactly what we're presenting them and maybe get them into a bad play. I mean, that's that's the hope. In the streak, you know, you, the winning streak, you played probably about 60 snaps a game, a little bit less defensively. Um, how much does that benefit when you get to yeah. January that you guys haven't had this huge load of snaps? Well, you, you bring up a good point because there was a point in the season when we were really concerned about how many snaps we were playing. Uh, it was adding up early in the year. I mean, I know we had some seven. I know we had some 70 snaps. I mean, it might have been a couple that creeped in the 80s. And that can wear on you over the course of the season. So it's been good to kind of balance that out. Uh, yeah, you'd like to, as long as it's not explode, I gotta, I, I gotta be careful when I say this. You know, you'd like to play 30 plays a game, <laughs> but you gotta be careful because if there's five touchdowns over the head, yeah, it's different. So no explosive plays and low play, the low play count is really a good thing. You want, you want, you want guys to be obviously peak knowledge, peak physical shape, understanding the down situation. Um, but so much of the offseason was to talk about how you were gonna have to mesh with Chris Jones as he got to training camp because he missed OTAs mm. and mandatory mini camp. Yeah. It's now 17 weeks of him being with you guys throughout the regular season. Just how has he sort of come along in the defense, understanding he started at a later time? Yeah, I think he's done a great job. I mean, I look at if you remember, there was a point in the season where we were sliding him out at defensive end. Mm -hmm. And so that challenged him even more mentally to learn another spot. Um, Hopefully we won't have to do that again. I mean, there are some packages where we may slip it in there, but him being able to concentrate on those two spots inside, I, I think certainly helps. And mm-hmm. look, at, we, we all know he's disruptive in there. Um, and so hope as, as much as we can do that, we'd like to do it. I'm sure next week we'll be focusing on the playoff team ahead, but as you reflect on these 17 weeks and having had the year off, are you happy you know, evaluating the last two years, how that went personally for you and in, in your personal career? I, I don't even... <laughs> I don't even go down the road, to be honest with you. I don't, um, and if it's okay, I don't even really want to go there. Yeah, no. uh, you know, only because I'm so, we, you really have to you know, preach to the players that it's like that. It's laser focus, and I, um, I'm really just focusing on these guys. We're not even into next week. I mean, I know people around us might be, because uh, we know we, we're luck fortunate enough, we know we have a game. Uh, but listen, I, you make that mistake, and get knocked off and we don't want that to happen. Coach, you mentioned Philip Rivers a little bit there. You you haven't seen him as often as a lot of the coaches around here. Right, just right. The not the division, yeah. Uh, what do you think of where he is in his career now? I know he's doing a lot of the things to get him in the yeah. spots right, but maybe he doesn't have the physical. He, he, is still the, he is still the elite competitor that we all know him to be. He, if, you're, if you can get yourself close to the action during a game when he's playing, Boy, is he into it, you know, and he's with everybody. Uh, and he, I think he thoroughly enjoys the game within the game that we talked about, the cat and mouse between whether it's Mike Linebacker and him, and, and he does it so well. I mean, even in the first game we played, um, you know, this four, five, six, maybe more than that, where he put him in a two-minute drill, he put him in a screen, I think, that took advantage of us. Early on in a third down, he put him in a run play uh, that took advantage of a front that we had. but. He's always been like that, and I still think he's playing at a high level. I know everybody wants to, you know, evaluate him, but we, we don't look at it any other way than, than this guy could come in here and be everything we've seen him be before, and hopefully we don't let that happen. Come okay, on, guys. So what did you see? Yeah, what did you see? You guys are on the same wavelength. Same question. Yeah. yeah. I, go ahead and... Uh, Just what did what, you see? Yeah, I, I think it was like 17, 18 plays, and we were hoping somewhere in the 20. Um, hopefully we can ramp that up a little bit. Thoroughly impressed with the first third down play where he came around the corner and uh, and then Frank ended up getting the, the sack on him. No. But look, he's he's been a pro. Uh, I think when he's in there, he helps us. Um, as the week has progressed here, uh, we just got through a walkthrough on a Thursday, but I know it's becoming more and more comfortable for him. So uh, hopefully that's going to be a feather in our cap and positive for us going forward. Coach, what is it about Andy Reid? You coached with him a long time. He puts together win streaks. His teams always put together win streaks. In Kansas City, every year he's had at least one streak of five wins, and he's done a lot better. Yeah. What is it about him? Rock solid. That's what he is. That's what he, and he always has been. Um, from the 
from the day we all got there in 1999 and the staff was from all over the place, um, we all noticed, we went through that first season, it was 5-11, and 11, I believe, but not once do you see Andy waver, good or bad. And I think that when you have a head coach that does that uh, co consistently, I think the players and coaches feed off of that. They just keep doing this, and I mean, I don't know, but to me, uh, that would be one of the reasons why I think he's able to do that. And you're right, he has done that a lot. Does it help a team going into the playoffs on a win streak, or does that all get washed away? The minute? Yeah, probably washed away. I mean, it's a whole it's a whole new season, right? It's a whole new ball game. The speed of the game goes up. You know, everybody you're playing is shooting for the same thing, and you're playing good teams. You know, um, I just think you just start over again. It's one game at a time. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay.